Thank you. Thank you for being in the house of God this morning. Um, I would uh, like to turn our Bibles this morning to Luke chapter 15. Um, A very important story here in Luke 15 that you may all be familiar with, but we're just going to look at one verse and uh, we will get some ideas from here. The message this morning I've uh, I've entitled or I've uh, the title is uh, an unthankful generation. You know we have a we have a four year old daughter, and her name is Natalie, and uh, for the most part we've taught her to say thank you, but uh, I don't think we've taught her to be thankful yet. And I think there's a is a difference there. I think many of our our young people and maybe many of uh, the 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 generation that's growing up, they know how to say thank you, especially. Uh, people who've been who've been who've grown up in church who are Christians, you know, considered people who have good manners or should have. Uh, and I think we know how to say thank th- thank you, but I don't believe many times we know how to be grateful, thankful, which is not the same. And there's a young man here in this story in uh, Luke chapter 15, verse number 12. We're just going to read this um, this one verse. <coughs> Luke 15, verse 12 says. Um, uh, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Let's pray before we get started this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, the, for your word. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, that we are uh, able to, uh, to be together with your church here. Uh, thank you that you have a, a Bible in our hands. And thank you, Lord, that uh, um, of all the things you teach us in it. And I pray this morning that you... Uh, move amongst us, that you would help us to have the good spirit and a good attitude so that you'd be able to, to show us the things we've been doing wrong and help us, Lord, this uh, important subject of uh, thankfulness and help us to live it and apply it. Help us teach, us to teach it to our, to our kids and to that uh, younger generation that's coming up. Father, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we have the story here of uh, this young man, who comes to his father one day, and he now wants his, his uh, inheritance that, uh, so, uh, according to him, belongs to him. Now, if this, an, if this is not an example of unthankfulness in the Bible, then I don't know what is. I mean, I see, I've seen many times uh, families uh, break because of uh, fighting for an inheritance, for a piece of land, for a house, for whatever it may be. But most of the time, uh, the parent is dead already. Now, in this story, this poor father hadn't even had the chance to die when his son was already trying to take everything he had and everything that he thought belonged to him. Now, um, I don't think this young man ever learned to be thankful for stuff and, and uh, really have a thankful um, attitude. Uh, and part of the problem, I believe here, is of the parents. Um, fathers and dad, moms, dads, uh, parents, we need to teach our kids to be thankful we're living in a generation where um, it, it, the, it, we, we have an entitled uh, mentality where we believe that um, uh, the government is supposed to give us stuff and, and uh, we, many people come to church to get things and, and the family, we're, kids think that it's there to give them stuff and, and that's not a correct attitude and that's never going to take them anywhere in life. And parents, it's our responsibility to teach our kids to be thankful for what they have. Um, it, it, we're not, um, you know what, we, we're not uh, even supposed to, to have the church teach us that. It's supposed to be taught at home, not even in the school or not by anybody else, but it's supposed to be taught at home. And I think this uh, young man's problem, a lot of things, uh, a big part of the problem was with his parents. I don't think they did a good job, and, and maybe they did try, but um, he never learned. That could also be the case, but the, 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 um, the end of the story is that he was not... Uh, thankful, and I think uh, the the first problem here we see is uh, that he had that mentality of entitlement. He believed, uh, he thought that uh, the things that, according to custom or how things were back then, were going to be his one day. Um, he thought that it was his right, that it was um, uh, people were there. His father had worked all his life to give him um, whatever he thought belonged to him. Uh, I I know I know I can think of uh, one specific um, example. I know of a dad. He said, "I'm, I already helped my kids growing up, and I've uh, I've um, taught them things, and I've uh, helped them to get a business started or whatever it may be. When the time my time is to die, 
I'm not going to leave him one single dollar. I'm all going to give it away. I'm all going to do something else with it. I've already helped him. And you know, um, even if we believe or think, or even if uh, the, we still, our culture still thinks that inheritance belongs to the kids, it's, you know, kids, you need to understand that um, if you get something, it's not because of anything you did, or it's not because you earned the right to it. It's not because any of that. It's just because somebody else was good to you. And if we not, don't learn to not um, have that entitlement genera- uh, mentality, we are never going to get anywhere in life. Now, I want to notice this one uh, word here that says in, in verse number 12, it says, um, the portions of good that falleth to me. Now, this is where I think that he had that mentality of um, everything. It belongs to me. It falls to my share. Uh, it is mine, even though I didn't do anything to earn it. I didn't do um, anything to, to um, be able to spend that money that I'm supposed to be getting. Uh, but he believed that it, was, it, it belonged to him. Now, I want to see a few things that are uh, the problem with that uh, entitlement mentality. And first, uh, we, need to, we need to know, and with our kids and, and uh, with us, if we are this, in this generation uh, who struggle with being, un- with being thankful, first we need to believe or we need to know that it is our nature, first of all. Now, um, one preacher one time said, you, you see little babies, how they're born, they're, they're, they're born with their fists clutched like this. And he says it's our responsibility as a parent to, to teach them to open those hands. Now, we're born with the mentality of, of me. See how f- selfish a little, a little kid is? Uh, I mean, they, they have one toy and, and a sister or brother has another, and now they want that one as well. And um, while it's not a big problem when they're two and three, it starts to be a problem when they're 12 and 13, and they still believe that way. Now it's becoming a problem, and we see that in, in, uh, in society nowadays, uh, where, where now these are 20-year-olds and, and, and 30-year-olds who never uh, learned to be thankful, and now um, they're starting to, to be able to, to run society, to, to say to some extent, and now we see how they are just um, uh, think the government should take care of them and, and everything else because we never learned as children in our homes to be thankful. But part of the problem is our nature. Now, um, thankfully, we don't have to end up that way. Now, we've been saying this morning how Jesus came to die for us and to do exactly that, to give us a new nature, one that is, uh, uh, the Bible says, one that is a divine nature, his own nature. He can bestow upon us if we believe him and accept him, and we don't have to live that way. Now, this week as we um, um, mm, celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, I think the first step for you truly to celebrate Thanksgiving is um, being, being saved. I don't think a person really can celebrate Thanksgiving unless uh, they're born again. Uh, they're believers. Because then you, become, then you get that nature from God that allows us to really be thankful. But it's not only our, our, a nature problem. Many times it's also an, an environment problem. Um, I mean, we're in, the, we're in America, the wealthiest country in the world. Um, not only that, but the generation has been the one that's been living the best from the beginning of time. I mean, you can get literally anything you want around the corner. And many times those commodities and that environment that we live in just um, is harder for us to really be thankful for what we have. I mean, you don't have to live, go far, sometimes just crossing the border, go to a different country, and um, being in a different environment will help you to open up your eyes to see the things that we have that we should be thankful for that not everybody has. And uh, so, so the, the, the country we live in, the, the lifestyle we live, the, the, sometimes it's, um, uh, we want to impress other people by, by what we have. Uh, it says, uh, somebody says, we want to impress people we don't even like with stuff we don't even have. Um, and that makes us unthankful, um, our, our environment. Now, that also can be changed. Not only the nature, God can give us a new nature, but uh, we don't have to just look at our environment and our society and, and uh, start going with the flow and forgiving or forgetting to be thankful. Uh, but that also can be changed. And um, um, uh, mission trips is, is a good example of that. Um, 
of, uh, of, of families and, and looking at other people and helping other people um, er, and changing or, or looking people who don't have the same environment we have. Now, a third thing I, thi- I believe the problem is with that, um, with that attitude is um, sometimes it's, uh, it's ignorance. Um, I think many times kids, children, don't learn to be thankful because there was just ignorance in their home as far as teaching them. That could also be the case. Now, if you see sometimes an unthankful person, don't always think um, they're, you know, it's their fault or whatever. Sometimes it could also be uh, just um, the parents didn't know to teach them any better or they're never around people who, who had a better attitude than to just expect things from others. Um, uh, but uh, and many times it's just a lack of training. Um, but, but ignorance... Um, can can also be be a, a part of this. Uh, I've heard I've heard many times parents say, um, "I just want to give my kids something that I never could have." Now, while that could be a good thing, not necessarily, um, because that sometimes that's what I'm saying. That's ignorance. Um, <clears throat> not just because you went without something in life doesn't mean now you have to try your hardest to give it to your kid. Because sometimes that's going to be bad for them to have that whatever it is. We just as parents. We need to um, be really um, dependent on God and how he wants us to, to train our family. But another problem I see here is just many times it's just open rebellion. Um, kids were taught to be thankful or the parents tried and they just never learned. They thought it was easier just to, to um, have people give them and, and expect things from others and, and never do their part and never carry their part of the load. And it's just, it's just rebellion. And, and parents, again, here we need to see uh, with our kids and make sure uh, I- I- we are doing our part and we are doing everything we can to stop that entitlement mentality from them. And and, and kids, they just uh, w- want so much more. And, and every time our, our little our little girl, every time we go to a store, she, she thinks she has to get something. And it's so hard for us to, you know what, a, <laughs> a juice is 30, 30 cents. I can buy her a juice. It's not, I don't, it's not that I don't want to buy it to her or I don't have the money for it. Sometimes, you know what, she just doesn't need it. She needs to be taught that not just because something is on the shelf, uh, she can have it or it's, it's hers now for taking. Every once in a while, it's just a case to say no. It doesn't make you a bad parent. She, he or she is not going to grow up with the conflicts and, and needing that thing. Parents, we just need to... We just need to make sure we're getting um, the way we train our children from the Bible and not from society and not from the world and from, from, what, from what they teach. Last thing I want is, is, is to, to raise children who think they're entitled to things. Man, uh, and <laughs> uh, if you've been around those people, you know that nobody likes them. I mean, <laughs> nobody likes those kind of people. We need to make sure... Uh, we we um, put our focus not on things. That's why I said many times it's the parents' fault because they care, the kids see their parents struggling so much to get more stuff and a better car and do this in the house and traveling and all that. And not that any of that is bad, but when our focus is on that and we forget on what's really important, then that's what we are teaching our kids without even saying anything. When, we, when our number one priority is on stuff or on things. Children, uh, jun- younger adults nowadays, they, we all think or many think that we have all these rights but zero responsibility. And uh, that, that teaches a bad attitude, a bad mentality. But now there is a, a reality that we need to teach and we need to look at. Let's go quickly to Psalms. 14. Now, first we see the problem for for being or raising an unthankful generation or being unthankful children, that um, that mentality that many times we have. Now we need to look at reality. Like I said, it's it's not about what I say or or honestly, really what a pastor says. It's about what the Bible says. You 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 shouldn't be coming to church to to implement what necessarily what comes out of this pulpit, uh, but you need to read your Bible to implement in your home what comes out of the Bible because that's what matters ultimately. Uh, you know, I can come here and, and, and say a lie because I am human and I'm, not, I'm not perfect, never claim to be, not even claim to be any good. 
but I know the Bible is perfect, and I know the Bible is right, and it's correct, and it's so wise, and it has so many good things that we can learn from it. If only we learn to read it and to study it and to apply it to our homes. And many times that's the problem, that um, we are not willing, really, to do what the Bible says, and we try to do shortcuts and, and try to do a little bit of the Bible and a little bit maybe from society or what my friends do or what uh, my parents want me to do or whatever the case might be, and that's where we, where we go astray. But look at the Bible, and look what it says when it comes to that mentality of entitlement and thinking that we deserve or it's ours. Look at um, 14, Psalms 14, verse 3. Look at what it says. They are all gone uh, aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Now, many times this verse is applied to salvation, and that would be correct. But it's not only our spiritual application or our spiritual side that it's talking to. It's just talking as a person. You know what? Father, mother, uh, uh, parents, we need to teach our kids, and we need to also have that attitude and that mentality that there is really nothing good in me. This is a little hard to swallow and a little hard to understand because we live in a society where we've been taught that you have to love yourself and, and you're good and, and uh, you're all this. But that is not what the Bible says. I am no good. I am no good. There's not one good thing in me. Not one. Now, if we really believe that concept and if we really grasp it, it's impossible for us to have an entitled mentality if we really believe there's no good in me. I don't deserve one blessed thing. Not one. One preacher one time said, you know what I deserve? I deserve to be in, in hell with my, with, my, uh, with my back broke. That's what I deserve. That's what I deserve. The Bible says there's not one good person. There's nobody that doeth good. Uh, read what it says about the heart that is wicked, that is desperately wicked, that is deceitful. I don't deserve one good thing. Not one. Yet God this morning allowed me to open my eyes, allowed me to have a family, allowed me to drive to church, allowed me to have a Bible. And we could go on and on. We could go on and for hours of just the blessings we received this morning. Yet I didn't deserve one of them. Not one. Not one. I haven't done anything, any single, one single thing to, re, to, to deserve that. We, are, we, we, need to, we need to believe and we really need to understand that we are worth nothing. We are worth nothing. You know that in the Bible, uh, um, God went, uh, several times... Um, called us worms, people. There in Psalms 22, you can go read it. Worm. Now, just this morning, we went out for a little walk last night, and, and, and our, our little girl, she got some, some, some acorns, and she left them in the van, and this morning, there were worms in there. Now, they stayed in the cup where she had left them, but, you know, my first thought was, gross, let's throw those things out, Let's put them in the trash. They're not good for nothing. They're just worms. But read Psalms 22. That's what God calls us. What do we deserve? What are we entitled to? Nothing. The reality is that we are entitled to nothing. We deserve nothing. Everything we have is by grace and only through God's mercy and his goodness. That's it. That's it. Now, it doesn't make us any, it, it, it doesn't mean that, um, believing that doesn't make us any less of a person. Okay? It's not, uh, don't, don't worry about your, your self-esteem. Don't worry about all that. That will be just fine. We're, we're very, um, by nature, uh, that's never our problem. Okay? But just remember, um, where our place really is. We deserve nothing. We are worth nothing. We are nothing. Young person, you don't deserve nothing from your parents. They don't owe you a blessed single thing. And all the clothes you're wearing that you didn't pay for, you didn't deserve those either. The food you eat, the places you go, the things you have, 
but not just children and teenagers, but also us as parents. It's all by His grace. It's all, it's all because of someone else's merits. This, this uh, young man in, in Luke 15 that wanted all that stuff, you know he hadn't worked one day in his life for that? Not one. It was his father who had done all that. He had earned all of it. Now his father had worked all his life. And you know the rest of the story, the parable there, how he went and spent that all. And maybe a few days, maybe a few weeks, maybe a few months, I don't know. But now think of it, what his father had spent a lifetime building, that teenager, that young adult with an entitlement attitude destroyed it in a short time. And that's what will happen if we never get a hold of our attitude and put it in the place where it belongs. That will happen. All we can do is destroy. All we can do is destroy. But now... You know, we, 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 uh, we see the problem, we see the reality, and now um, it's time for us to, to change. It's time for us to do something, especially in this time of year. Why don't we decide it's time to do something in our home to change that attitude we have or that attitude my kids m may still have? Number one, it all needs to start with us, with the adult of the family, right? We want to make the, the choices, we want to make the decisions. Uh, we think we're boss. Well, let's do it this, in this area as well. Let's be thankful. Make sure your kids know you're thankful. Make sure your kids know you don't take things for granted. You don't take your wife for granted. You don't take your husband for granted. You don't, think, you don't take everything you have and own for granted. Make sure they know it. Make sure they see an, a, a, a thankful attitude in you. Because like I said at the beginning, you can teach your kids to say thank you. And you say thank you as well, but do they really know and can they really see your thankful attitude? When all they hear is complaining, and, and now this, and now I need this, and now I want this. And, and, and parents, that's what our kids going to grow up to be. The same that we, the same kind of attitude that we have, they will have as well. We need to, we need to start with ourselves. We need to make sure our family sees our thankful attitude. We need to teach, um, we need to teach our kids to be humble. You know, because somebody who is uh, who's, who's very pride is very hard for them to be thankful. You know why um, um, God says you have to be like children in order to get to the kingdom of heaven? It's because... They, it's easy for them to understand. Our, our little girl, I'm sorry I bring her up so much. It's just, it keeps coming up. Uh, she is very quick to say, I'm sorry. And I love that attitude about her. And I want to make sure, we want to make sure as, as parents that we, that, that we, we, we um, make everything in our power to keep her that way. To be very quick to apologize and to say, I'm sorry, and to be humble. It's harder for us to do it. For whatever reason it may be, now it's, it's as wrong. But we need to teach our kids to be humble, to apologize, to s really see what I have is because somebody else gave it to me. Somebody else worked for it. It's not anything I did. We need, them, we need to teach them to be humble. We don't, they don't need to, to have everything they want. We spent uh, Christmas with our with my in-laws last year. I have never seen that many gifts in one place. Never. And it's not a bad thing to receive things. But you, in spite of that, you can teach them to be humble. I knew of a pastor who um, he would tell his son, uh, you pick up one of the, of the presents you have before unwrapping them. You pick them, you pick it, and we're going to go give it to somebody else. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. And one thing, he, he, t he tried him. His, his boy really wanted a BB gun. And he got a BB gun, and he didn't wrap it. The, the dad didn't. And he put it there by the Christmas tree. And uh, he had another box with a better BB, the one that the kid really, really wanted. I don't know what all he could do. Um, 
uh, and he had it somewhere aside, and he, and he, said his, he, he told his boy, now pick one gift, and you're going to go give it to somebody else, to another friend or whoever, your neighbor, whoever. And uh, he was, he was going to try. If he, if he picks that BB gun, that the, the, the gift that he really wanted, I will give him uh, this other one, the better one that I had for him. And you know what? The little boy passed the test. He grabbed that BB, the one that he knew he wanted, the present he wanted, and he said, Dad, I want to give this to somebody else. I think that's a, that's, that's a father and, and a parent who was doing their job as far as teaching the kids to be thankful and to be humble, and I don't need everything I want. I don't need everything I want. In this generation that we're living, it should at least be the Christians who are different, at least in that way. In your work, they should be able to notice that you don't have that same attitude and mentality that others around you do. In your school, your neighbors, uh, your, your family, if they're not saved, whatever it may be, it should be the Christians being the example. It should be the Christians being the light. We need to get a hold of this, um, this, this thing of thankfulness and really, really be thankful and, and show thankfulness through our attitude. You know, teach them humility. Uh, we can also teach them to give. Giving. Giving. Giving will help you teach thankfulness to your children. You know what? At home, if you want to read Romans chapter 1, all these problems that society now is so engulfed in, you know where they come from? Being unthankful. And I will not go into many details of what problems I'm talking about, but go, go home and read Romans chapter 1. It is clearly spelled out. You will immediately figure out what problem. And you will read and you will see that it all started because they were not thankful. This is not just something that they sound good saying thank you. That's not, that's not the reason why we do it. This is something much, 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 much more deeper and much more important. This is a very serious matter of being thankful. We need to teach them but we need to live it ourselves. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your...